Add-ons can save you hours of time in Blender, and today we're gonna to be looking at the best add-ons of 2025. I've noticed a lot of add-on videos just show the same top sellers over and over, which are great, but in this video, I'm gonna be highlighting add-ons you might not have heard of, ones that I use on almost every project myself, and I think you'll find them helpful too. Stick around to the end of the video, and I'll tell you the best five add-ons bundled right in Blender for free. All you have to do is turn them on, but let's get started. First up is the free add-on stop Mo, which I actually created myself, to allow me to convert my animations into a jerky stop motion look with just one click. I recently updated it for free, adding some new features, making it even easier to use. And Blender Market's having a 25% off sale right now where you can get most of the add-ons in the video, including my own crafty asset pack, which allows you to drag and drop materials into your scene to instantly get a handcrafted look. Or you can check out the dynamic visual effects pack, which allows you to drag and drop in anime style visual effects with easy to use controls. I'll make sure to link to those in the description below. Now, not the flashiest add-on on this list, but the ultimate animators bundle from Blast Frame is one of my most used add-on. And what it does is it ports a lot of features from other professional softwares like Maya's graph editor, like filtering, weighted tangents, cycle offsets, amplifications, and more. So if you've ever felt that Blender's graph editor was a bit tedious, or that it could be a bit easier to use, then this is a great add-on for you. Now, this is a recent one I discovered. This is the artist that actually rigged my new character, Goober, and he has a whole suite of tools you should check out, including a great natural lighting set, but I wanna highlight the background set that he has. It's a built-in gallery of painterly skies and stylized environment maps, perfect for NPR, or illustrative renders. It also puts this little handy set of features here in the panel where you can easily make adjustments to the lightings, positions, and more. Now, this is something I've been wanting in Blender for a long time, the ability to add lens flares. Now, I've fed several options before, but they all worked in the compositor. The great thing about Flare 2 is that it's an actual 3D lens flare that works in your scene and reacts like a real lens flare. It comes with a bunch of presets, and also gives you complete customization over all the flare attributes. If you've ever watched me live stream or seen me make some of my film sets, you know I use this on every single model I do. It's called Quad Remesher. It's an industry standard retopology tool used by studios and can convert messy scans or detailed sculpts into clean quad meshes with just one click. And it works very fast as well. This works better than any other remesh tool I've ever used. Now, I don't know about you, but I can never get glass to look right in cycles. It takes forever trying to get those refractions, highlights, and color dispersion to behave, and it just takes dozens of tweaks. Well, Shader Plus aims to solve that. It looks great without all the tweaks. It gives you a bunch of glass shaders with intuitive controls for IOR, roughness, and tint, and it comes packed with a bunch of presets. Now, if you're interested in giving your renders a more realistic look or more character, check out LensSim. What it does is it emulates real-world camera optics with distortion, vignetting, and chromatic variation. It has a bunch of built-in lens profiles, and you can import more, or you can manually tweak them. This is one of my favorite new add-ons, and I definitely recommend checking this one out. Bones Dynamics Pro saved me a ton of time on animation. What it does is it adds simulation to bones, so you can automatically add secondary motion to any bones, ears, tails, cloth panels, you name it, without having to set up a whole rigid body or soft body sim. You can tweak a lot of the settings like stiffness, damping, and gravity per bone in the UI, and just let the add-on handle all of that extra animation. I used this for the hair on my character Watermelon Girl in my last short film. I'm also using it for Goober's cake. Now for retopology, a lot of people are familiar with the add-on Retopoflow, but JNM from YouTube is actually releasing his own retopology tool called JRetopo. The difference with this one is that it runs directly in the Blender viewport without an overlay. This means that you can just work with all of your traditional Blender tools throughout the retopology process. CG Matter actually just dropped another amazing add-on. This one instantly converts your 3D scene into a pencil sketch. You can dial in the stroke density, weight, and style sliders to achieve a hand-drawn look in seconds, no post-processing or manual line art required. Gobos Plus is a great Gobo add-on. People underestimate how much of good lighting is just breaking up the lighting and adding shadows, so it's not all big, flat, empty lighting. And I used this pack on my last short film, Watermelon Girl, and includes animated textures, which I use to create this underwater effect in the ocean scenes. If you've ever wondered why Blender renders often look washed out or bland, well, that's because Blender's color space is essentially log meaning it meant to be graded for contrast and saturation after you've rendered. And Render Raw adds an intuitive color grading controls right in your viewport with lift, gamma, gain, vibrance, all right there. 
It also includes a bunch of presets. So if you're not familiar with grading, it's a great way just to apply a preset and instantly get better results. Mossify is a new product I've been using on my recent project, and it adds realistic moss. It has procedural mass to adapt to every crease, cavity, and surface angle. But the greatest thing is that it comes bundled with a ton of high quality and performant moss assets that would be hard to gather otherwise, which is why I'm recommending it. There are a ton of IV generators out of there, but I'd have to say my favorite so far has been the Baga IV generator. It'll let you generate organic vines and IV that wrap naturally around your mesh, no particle systems or weight painting needed. It can control branch thickness, length, and randomness. But the real selling point here is the amazing variety of flora and presets that you can apply. Now, snapping objects to curves and deforming them in Blender with its default tools feels clunky and tedious. And Fit Curve aims to make that as simple as grabbing your object, the curve, and clicking a button. I love this tool for creating environments, tweaking models, and motion graphics. Now, this might not be for everybody in the Blender community, but if you're like me, I prefer to do my compositing in After Effects, which is why I love this add-on called Blender to AE. It allows you to export your cameras, lights, animation curves straight into After Effects. It preserves the lens settings, keyframe interpolation, and more. This was a lifesaver on my short film when I was trying to do some external compositing. Now, if you've ever used Blender's default bake workflow, it can be laborious. It takes a long time and a lot of setup. But Simple Bake just batches the normal, ambient inclusion, curvature, and more into one single operation. It manages the UV margins automatically, exports organized texture maps, all with a single clip. There's a ton of options in here, and it can be as simple or complicated as you would like it to be. UV Packmaster is used on every single model I do. It's the fastest, most efficient UV packing engine I've seen in Blender. It has advanced algorithms to tightly fit your islands into a zero to one space, automatically rotating and scaling for maximum texture real estate. You can switch between speed or density modes depending on your deadline. And it has a ton of advanced features specifically for game devs, visual effects artists, and more. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. And as promised, here are five free built-in add-ons that all you have to do is enable them under the preferences add-on menu. Copy global transform quickly copies world location space, rotation, and scale from one object to another in a single click. Pierre Pocat actually has a great video on how this is amazing for animation and getting your objects to snap to your character or to keep their feet snapped to the ground. F2 is a simple add-on, but it enhances Blender's mesh editing workflow with intelligent face creation and it edge fills shortcuts. All you have to do is grab a single edge, press F, and then it will automatically try and gather the edges around it and fill those in. Loop Tools adds a suite of mesh utilities, circle, relax, space, flatten, that streamline common modeling tasks. This is really great for grabbing a portion of your model and converting it to a circle. Node Wrangler supercharges your shader and compositing workload with easy node preview, link cleanup, and quick swapping. It has a ton of shortcuts and there's a manual out there that lists them all. I recommend checking that out, but this one should be enabled by default in my opinion. And lastly, I don't see many people talk about this, but if you search extra mesh, you can enable it for both objects and curves. And what it does is give you a whole bunch of primitives and other options under the add menu. Most notably, it includes some things such as adding rocks where you can simplify the rocks and a ton of curve shapes, which are difficult to make manually. Which add-on are you gonna enable first? Drop a comment below and hit like if this saved you time. Subscribe for more no-nonsense Blender tutorials.